Coming up on Top 30, Hurricane Maria is on the move. A four-year-old is struck by a baseball. Will it change the rules? And these six women showed up to a wedding in the same dress. It's all the news you need to know. This is Top 30. Over three million people are without power in Puerto Rico after the island was devastated by Hurricane Maria. Experts are tracking it to see where it's headed next. After the storm hit on Wednesday, streets were flooded, buildings were destroyed, and trees were literally ripped out of the ground. At least one person was killed. The mayor of Puerto Rico's capital, San Juan, said, quote, the San Juan that we knew yesterday is no longer there. On Thursday, the National Weather Service placed the entire country under a flash flood warning. The hurricane brought storm surge flooding of four feet. Officials said it could take four to six months to restore electricity. Puerto Rico was already in the middle of a financial crisis when Hurricane Irma hit earlier this month and still hadn't recovered when Maria struck. Maria is now a category three hurricane with winds up to 115 miles per hour. Meteorologists are waiting to see how close Maria gets to the east coast of the U.S. Rain, wind, and high surf are expected in areas between North Carolina and Massachusetts. Hurricane forecasts are only good for three to five days, so it could get farther out to sea or closer. As for Puerto Rico, Governor Ricardo Rossello said, quote, God is with us. We are stronger than any hurricane. The U.S. Federal Reserve said this week they're getting rid of trillions of dollars in assets, and that could have an effect on loans for your house and car. The Fed currently holds $4.5 trillion in bonds and mortgage-backed securities. Most were purchased in the dark days of the 2008 financial crisis to stimulate the economy by keeping interest rates down and making it easier for Americans to borrow. Those are the assets they will now take off their balance sheets because they say the economy has recovered. The Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen said on Wednesday, quote, we are working down our balance sheet because we feel stimulus is no longer needed. Because this was the stimulus that was keeping interest rates low, that means they will be heading up again at some point, affecting the cost of mortgages and loans. The Fed says the process will be gradual. The Fed's benchmark interest rate, however, will stay at its current 1%. This is what's trending. A young girl is said to be doing okay after she was hospitalized when a foul ball off the bat of Todd Frazier hit her in the face at 105 miles per hour. Frazier immediately dropped to one knee with his face in his hands. Several players were visibly shaken. It's prompted another push on extending the safety netting around the baselines. MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell has apologized after a clip of him visibly agitated, yelling at staff members during commercial breaks leaked online. Crazy sound coming in my ear. O'Donnell tweeted on Tuesday saying, a better anchorman and a better person would have had a better reaction to technical difficulties. I'm sorry. And finally, Nathan Nanenga had one heck of a European vacation. The 27-year-old Utah native put together a one-minute video of highlights titled, Europe is impressive. And it's, well, take a look. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, <laughs> that was amazing. President Trump says that he has decided on what he's going to do with the Iran nuclear deal, but is not making his decision public yet. And he hasn't told most of his staff either. The deal was negotiated by the Obama administration in 2015, along with several other countries, including the United Kingdom, Russia and Germany. The US and its allies agreed to lift long-term sanctions if Iran gave up the means to make nuclear weapons. Trump has repeatedly slammed the deal, as you may recall, and this week at the United Nations, he repeated those claims, calling the agreement one of the worst and most one-sided transactions in history. The president now faces an October 15th deadline to make a decision. Iran's president says that the US would lose international credibility if Trump pulls out of the deal, and several European leaders support the agreement, saying killing it would be a mistake. And here's an important detail. The UN's nuclear watchdog agency has concluded several times that Iran is complying with its obligations, meaning the country is further away from having a nuclear bomb than it was before the agreement. UK scientists have made a medical breakthrough by editing the DNA of human embryos for the first time ever. 
This is important because it could ultimately help scientists find a way to improve IVF or explain why women miscarry. A team at the Francis Crick Institute in London studied 41 donated embryos for the first seven days of development, manipulating the genes in the DNA. Basically, they learned how to turn off a gene so they could test and see what happens when it's eliminated. It became clear how important one gene called OCT4 is in early development. When the gene was removed, the embryo imploded on itself within seven days. Dr. Kathy Nakin told the BBC, if we knew the key genes for an embryo to develop successfully, that would, I would hope in the future, lead to improvements in IVF technology and give us really important insights into why some pregnancies fail. Infertility and miscarriage is heartbreaking, so any progress is a step in the right direction. It's good to keep your promises, and one Philadelphia Phillies fan proved he's a man of his word. Damon Miller Jr. was at a game and tweeted, if Hoskins goes yard tonight, I'll buy everyone chicken nuggets. He was referring to rookie slugger Reese Hoskins, who, sure enough, ended up hitting a home run. Miller tweeted, RIP my wallet. But days later, he returned to the ballpark and made good on his promise, handing out about 300 chicken nuggets to fans before the game. The Phillies were good sports and picked up the tab, but it doesn't end there. After giving away nuggets, Miller was in the stands holding up a sign showing his tweet. It caught Hoskins' attention, and Hoskins ended up giving him a baseball. All right, let's go to the New York Stock Exchange for our Fox Business Minute. With your friend and mine, here's Nicole Petalides. In business news, hold on to your wallet. The airlines are flying away with it. A new government report shows airlines flew away with $7.1 billion in airline fees last year. That's up nearly a billion from the prior year. The number includes everything from check bag fees to changing or canceling your flight. The big jump is in large part thanks to more people hitting the skies. And the music business is booming, and it's all thanks to streaming. Music streaming services now have 30 million subscribers and its revenue is up 48% this year. And while some thought Napster was the end of music retail, sales are actually up 17%. That's the first time since Napster hit the scene in 1999. And get a lift from Budweiser. The beer maker is partnering with the ride hailing company to offer 150,000 free round trip rides. It starts today and continues every Thursday after. Budweiser will share a code on social media and it can be used to claim two $10 credits. More top 30 after this. James Cameron is returning to The Terminator, and so is Linda Hamilton, who last played Sarah Connor in Cameron's Terminator 2. In fact, despite several other Terminators having been made since, Cameron is reported to see this one as the sequel to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Arnold Schwarzenegger is also on board. Cameron created the franchise in 1984, but it's been more than 25 years since Schwarzenegger and Hamilton shared the screen. Cameron says Schwarzenegger and Hamilton will be the anchors of this new movie, but it will also introduce a bunch of new characters. Cameron will actually produce this time. The director of Deadpool will be behind the camera. The characters in the film will once again jump around in time, as will viewers to the film, as James Cameron's Terminator 3 plugs us right back into the early 90s. As times change, so does language, and the Merriam-Webster Dictionary just added about 250 new words and updated the meaning of others. Some of the new ones include froyo, the correct spelling is without the dash, alt-right with the dash, and sriracha, the popular sauce. Webster added another definition to the word troll, which means a dwarf or giant in Scandinavian folklore. The additional definition to antagonize online by deliberately posting inflammatory, irrelevant, or offensive comments or other disruptive content. And here's the new secondary definition for dog whistle, which has a political undertone, an expression or statement that has a secondary meaning intended to be understood only by a particular group of people. Have a word you think should be added? Miriam Webster actually takes suggestions on their website. Nearly half a million trucks are being recalled because they may catch fire. 
Fiat Chrysler Automobile says the recall affects over 400,000 of its Ram 2500 and 3500 trucks. Fiat says models with a diesel engine built between 2013 and 2017 have a part that, quote, after exposure to certain conditions, may overheat and potentially cause an engine compartment fire. The company says customers have reported, quote, a small number of fires so far, but no one has been injured. They also say if your vehicle is affected, it may turn on a warning light on your dashboard. Shakespeare said a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. He's right, as a name change is coming to the iconic Rose Bowl. It's still going to be called the Rose Bowl, but a first in its 95 year history, the playing surface will now be called Spiker Field for at least the next 25 years. Todd Spiker is a UCLA alum and Silicon Valley real estate developer. He donated $10 million to the university. UCLA is hoping to raise a total of $40 million for stadium renovations just in time for the Rose Bowl's 100th birthday in five years. Officials made it clear the name of the stadium is not for sale and they want to preserve the history and tradition of the Rose Bowl. Top 30, we'll be right back. In today's hometown stories, Norwalk, Ohio middle schoolers Caden Mancilla and Eben McKenzie were enjoying their lunch and telling jokes when Caden started to choke on the carrot he was eating. And though 13-year-old Eben had never received any training, his instinct led the way as he started the Heimlich maneuver. Eben told Fox 8 Norwalk, I wouldn't say I was a hero, I just, I saved my friend. Caden added, after he did that, I felt like he became my best friend. In our second story, Madam Suzelle Poole may be 77, but she won't let that stop her from dancing. Poole spent 10 years as a soloist ballerina for the Houston Ballet and has since continued as an instructor and choreographer in Dallas, Texas. Almost every month, she gives free performances at local schools and nursing homes, inspiring others with her love of dance. As she explained to Fox 4 Dallas, I think I encourage them to do exercise, which is very important. For our final story, four-year-old Wyatt Hemphill has a very rare immunodeficiency disorder and was admitted to the University of Iowa Children's Hospital for a bone marrow transplant. On Saturday, his spirits were lifted as he witnessed 70,000 fans waving from the football stadium next door. The tradition of waving to the nearby children's hospital began this year, and so far, it seems like a success. As his mother wrote in a Facebook post, first time he actually smiled and giggled since we've been here. He felt so special. Report cards could be changing as the A through F scale used to grade students may be outdated. Some Bay Area private schools are working to push through a new grading system where transcripts more accurately reflect students' accomplishments and strengths. Kate Reeser, director of San Domenico School in San Anselmo, said the grading system is pretty broken. San Domenico wants to try a new school of thought called Mastery Transcript Consortium, which grades a student based on a narrative that explains how well a student has mastered an idea or lesson. The school is one of 14 in the Bay Area participating in the program, which has more than 100 across the nation. However, the switch to this concept is about seven years away from being a standard in grading. So for now, put those A-plus report cards on the fridge and trash the bad ones before your parents see them. A company is developing a submarine that includes all the luxuries of a yacht and the estimated price tag is about $2 billion. Take a look at the M7. It is two stories high and 377 feet long with a helipad, VIP suites, and a movie theater. But what makes this different is that you can flip a switch and go underwater to take in all of the sights. It's customizable, giving the option to choose the interior layout as well. It is perfect for those super rich who think only owning a massive private yacht doesn't make them look enough like a villain from James Bond. And now a little bit of girl talk. Cramps can be horrible. And now doctors are taking women's pain complaints around that time of the month seriously. The National Health Services in England suggests that doctors pay more attention to women's complaints of period pain because one out of 10 women suffers from endometriosis. And not only that, it takes doctors on average seven and a half years to diagnose. Endometriosis is a painful condition of the uterus with symptoms like chronic pelvic discomfort, extremely painful periods, as well as pain while using the bathroom and before and after sex. And how painful can this pain become? According to John Gilbod, professor of reproductive health at University College London, period cramps can be as bad as having a heart attack. 
Because of this, the NHS also suggests that if a woman complains of even one symptom, doctors should consider endometriosis as a diagnosis. So ladies, pay attention to your bodies. And everyone else, if a woman says she can't do whatever because she's got cramps, believe her. Forbes magazine released its list for the 100 greatest living business minds and all of the usual suspects are on there. We expect to see heavy hitters like Bill Gates, Charles Koch, Richard Branson and Howard Schultz. They're some of the most powerful business people in the world. However, the list is also peppered with unlikely figures, including fashion icon Diane von Furstenberg, U2 from and Bono, Spanx founder Sarah Blakely, hip hop pioneer and entrepreneur Russell Simmons and Paul McCartney. Many on this list started as artists and thinkers, as creatives, but ended up using their business acumen to build an empire. Furstenberg designed the first wrap dress and its popularity kicked off her career. She said, quote, soon we were making 25,000 dresses a week. I was living the American dream and established my brand. Similarly, Bono's empire was built on helping others. He said, I've always seen what I do as an activist, as an artist, as an investor, as coming from the same place. I know you two, Paul McCartney and Diane von Furstenberg, I've got absolutely no idea what Spanx is. This is Top 30 and we'll be right back. The opioid crisis in the United States is now so dire, it is shortening the life expectancy of Americans. The opioid problem has reduced the average life expectancy in America by two and a half months. This according to a report by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Researchers looked at data from every state. They found that between the years 2000 and 2015, Americans' life expectancy went up. In 2015, it went down for the first time in decades because of deaths from opioids. In that same time frame, the number of deaths from opioid painkillers in America tripled. Some scientists believe there could be even more than that. One of the researchers told Time magazine, quote, in general, we don't see decreases in life expectancy attributable to a single cause that are of this magnitude. The average American can now expect to live 78.8 years. This really is one of those stories that should be even bigger and even more talked about than it is. You're watching Top 30 and we'll be back in a minute. Pharrell Williams won a Grammy for his music video, Happy, after featuring people around the world being happy. Well, now another video by the Irish funk band Jiggy has gone viral, approaching 12 million views in less than a week. The song is called Silent Pace, and similar to Pharrell's video, it's a mashup of people everywhere of all different ages and ethnicities doing a little jig that is apparently contagious. Irish Central describes Jiggy's new sound as a fusion of vocal lilting, beatboxing, Irish traditional music, hip hop dance grooves, along with world music rhythms and harmonies. And the dance, well, it's really open to your interpretation. So as another famous artist, Will Smith once said, get jiggy with it. Coca-Cola is using artificial intelligence to drive their success. They already have a huge data-driven strategy, but in recent years, they've poured a lot of money into AI. To collect information, they use big data like social media, cloud computing, e-commerce, and mobile apps. AI is the foundation for everything we do. The company's global director of digital innovation, Greg Chambers, said, we create intelligent experiences. AI is the kernel that powers that experience. Eventually, Coca-Cola wants to build AI personalities that will, and here's the idea, live inside vending machines, allowing consumers to have their drinks mixed to their personal taste. Something that I think sounds intensely annoying. You go into an event and you're wearing the same thing as someone else. It's the worst. So imagine attending a wedding only to find five other women are wearing the same dress you are. That's exactly what happened at one Sydney, Australia wedding earlier this month. And no, they weren't bridesmaids. Debbie Speranza, the one in the middle, posted photos of the six women laughing with the bride on Facebook with the caption, what are the odds? And hashtag backup bridesmaids. She also posted the photo to the page of the bridal shop where the dresses were bought, saying, quote, you really should start a bridal registry so that your customers can inquire whether anyone else else has purchased one of your dresses for the same event. No, we are not the bridesmaids, just the guests. The bride, Julia Mamone, called it hilarious, and we agree. 
So that is it for today's Top 30. Here are some stories coming up that are worth knowing about. A new app lets you put videos of crimes online while they're in progress. We'll tell you how it works. Get the latest from Buckingham Palace with our new Royal Watch series. And things looking up for an overweight, AKA fat rescue dog after his family helped him lose 60 pounds. These stories and more coming up on the next Top 30.